Hey, what's going on everyone? In today's video, I wanna walk you through a framework that I built over two years when I first broke into tech sales that allowed me to go from being an SDR making 75K a year to an account executive making almost $300,000 a year in two years. Just for a little bit of context, the reason that I developed this is because when I first broke into tech sales as an SDR, I got promoted to account executive rather quickly in three and a half months. But then for the next two years, I was a full cycle account executive, which meant that I basically had to run everything myself. I didn't have an SDR supporting me, and I also had to run a full territory as an account executive carrying my own quota. This forced me out of necessity to learn how to prospect and run a territory as an SDR hyper, hyper efficiently, while also building out the skills to ensure that any time I had a serious opportunity as an account executive, I actually went on and closed it. And the reason that I'm making this video, the reason that I bring this up today, one is thank you, because if you've seen us growing over the last two years, you may have seen recently our rebrand to higherlevels.com, and we've started a new community, the SDR Accelerator, that's a combination of videos, live coaching, a community with other verified top performers in the industry, and this framework that I'm gonna walk you through today is the foundation for the academic portion of the course. And Chris and I, who many of you know if you've been in Tech Sales Ascension, are a community that helps you break into tech sales, he and I have been working privately with the top SDRs at companies like Outreach, Brex, Okta, Rubrik, and many others to ensure that this curriculum really aligns, really actually drives results. And not to mention, many of you on my YouTube channel almost on a daily basis are asking if we offer any courses for SDR specifically. And the last thing that I wanna talk about as well before we get into the framework is really the three major things that drove us to create this in the first place that we really felt were missing from the broader online education and also just sales education space as a whole. And I wanna be very clear, I've read basically every sales book there is you can read. I've invested thousands of dollars at this point into online training myself, and I found a lot of it valuable. However, the three main things that really stood out to us, and first and foremost, we really felt at the position level of an SDR, there was not an end-to-end -end solution to really drive meaningful and lasting results. Because there's a lot of courses out there that will teach you how to make a good cold call, that will teach you how to write great emails or how to develop a framework to run your territory and things of these nature, but they're all kind of disconnected parts and they don't really come together cohesively where you have to go in on your own and fill in a lot of the gaps yourself. But additionally, again, if you're an ambitious SDR, I would imagine many of you, if not every single one of you that are in tech sales, are looking to break in or grow your career because it has an insanely high earning potential. And you can make a lot of money as an SDR, but you really make a lot as an account executive if you perform well and consistently over time. And that's, I think, the biggest thing that we brought to the table is yes, all of these different pieces I just mentioned in terms of getting your day-to-day -day job better, and I'll go into that in more depth, but also how do you promote to account executive? Because yes, if you hit your quota, you're in a great position. But what if you work at an organization where you've hit quota along with two of your peers and now there's only one spot open? The second major point again is I have really valued from a lot of the content that I took in over time, but I really felt I didn't walk away from those with something that really helped me in my day to day. Sure, I ran cold calls a little bit better. Sure, I wrote better emails. And, and I'm not even trivializing the value that those things provide, but what does that mean when it actually comes to my day-to-day -day workflow, when I'm actually planning my entire territory, when I'm actually creating repeatable sequences to try and hit customization at scale? These are serious opportunities that we felt were really missing from an end-to-end -end solution. And the last thing was also access to a community of verified top performers outside of your own company and also instructors that have been in your position before as well. Because I think when I bought these different courses, they were solid, don't get me wrong, but it helps so much when you have a community of like-minded individuals that are working towards the same goal. And also I might mention in the day-to-day -day grind of being an SDR and trying to promote, it's really nice to have a community of people that are outside your company that you're not directly competing for that next promotion with. Because you're gonna get honest feedback, objective feedback about your performance, and you'll really see a lot of compounding benefits in your day-to-day -day job and ultimately in your career trajectory. But nonetheless, there's more direct information about the SDR Accelerator community in the description of this video. And if you're not in a position to join it, not a problem. I'll walk you through the framework now that we've been developing over the last eight months. And our goal is to really give you a framework that can help you build your entire career, not just become the best SDR on a day-to-day -day performance metric, but also the person that's best positioned to promote to account executive and ultimately start making 150, 200, 250,000 plus dollars very quickly and early on into your tech sales career. I mentioned the three biggest opportunities we felt there was in the tech sales education space. 
I think starting, and I would say again, the core foundation of what we're doing, and if I could use analogy, if you don't mind, when I was an athlete, I had a brief opportunity to train under the world championship winning head coach of Denmark. I played the sport of team handball for the US, and I briefly had a chance to train in Denmark. And there's one thing that he said that really stood out to me that I think, if anything, has really helped me in my tech sales career, which is he, we were talking through a play, we were looking at strategy. He had the offense and defense at a practice kind of walking through a play in slow motion. And really the gist of what he was saying is all we are doing here is running these plays by the book to try and find and expose weaknesses in our defense. And all we're doing when we're thinking about the best pass to make, when we're thinking about the best move to make, whether it's going to our right, going to our left, the thought on our mind and what we want to become second nature is asking ourselves if we are in the best position at all times to have a higher likelihood of success. And notice, I'm not guaranteeing anything about this framework. He wasn't guaranteeing anything about a player's performance. But really, in an imperfect world where sales is not just like a computer that runs a repeatable code, there's so many personal dynamics and imperfections that go into this. You need to be asking yourself at all times, am I putting myself in the best position to win at any given time? What are the things that I need to do to be putting myself in the best position to win at all times? How do I even go about that, right? The questions are endless. And it's really something we wanted to instill in our community of making sure you're in the best position at all times. Because all things equal, if you and someone else have the equal cold calling ability, the equal emailing ability, and you have the same exact amount of leads, on average, you're going to finish roughly similar. But if you know, as an example, and this is the very beginning of our coursework and the, the framework that we've developed, walking through your territory and truly asking yourself, what are the highest and most likely leads to convert? If you're an SDR or you're familiar with the tech sales space, you're gonna have inbound and outbound leads. This probably isn't new information to you. But as you look at your inbound leads and outbound leads, not all of them are created equal. And as a very simple analogy, your people requesting a demo, your people that are asking for pricing are obviously way more interested than some random person that's attending a webinar, right? And in an ideal world, that's all you'd go after. But once you've exhausted those leads, how do you determine the leads below that, their likelihood, their intent? How do you strike up a conversation with someone that's on the fence versus someone who's already done enough research and wants to know pricing for your platform? And these are the types of things we break down first and foremost with your territory. So when you're thinking about your own territory, what leads consistently perform the strongest? Obviously, someone who wants pricing is gonna be up on top of that list. But where I think you really make a huge difference in your SER career is when you sit down and look at all of the common lead types and you say, well, actually, as an example, this webinar topic tends to show someone who's more interested in higher paid features or whatever it might be than this other webinar that's just a generic you know, data sheet about our product. And these are the types of things that I think a lot of SDRs don't do. They treat more or less all leads as equal instead of not only determining which leads are the highest and most likely to convert, but then, and something we go really deep into that I have not found in any courses online, is how do you create automatic reports? How do you go into your CRM like Salesforce, like HubSpot, and start generating reports on autopilot so every single day, every single week that you come in, you are automatically getting the most relevant leads that you can go in and attack without even thinking. You don't even have to ask yourself when you come in and spend the first hour of your day saying, hmm, which lead should I go after? You've automated 90 plus percent of that workflow already by the time you spent three months in your job. And now you're starting to really compound your efforts. And obviously the same thing applies on the outbound side. Not every company, just because they are a finance company or they look like a competitor of yours is a great fit. So how do you determine what kinds of companies you should go after? How do you prioritize your workflow so you can go after those companies before wasting your time on lower quality opportunities? And I think a lot of SDRs in the, the hype and all the excitement of your first year in tech sales, which is a very real thing, often get so focused on how do I make a good cold call? How do I write a good email? Well, how do you know the person that you're going after is even the right person in the first place? Are you spending time to make sure that every lead you go after is the highest potential lead of any other leads that you could find in your company's database or you could generate in some way, shape, or form? And so all that to say, that is a huge, huge emphasis for me when I'm planning my own territory is I'm asking myself at all times, just because someone does this or they use this technology or they use our competitor or they just got a round of funding, that doesn't necessarily mean they're in a position to buy. 
And again, if you want to pause and maybe, you know, you're an SDR right now and think about and maybe just write out some of the highest performing lead types, both on the inbound and outbound side, it's a good time to do so. But really for me, once that foundation is in place, now the ability to become hyper effective at cold calls, now the ability to write very compelling and customized emails rather quickly becomes a very important skill set. But again, going back to the fact that you've already planned out your territory, now the speed at which you can write a highly customized and targeted email becomes that much faster than the average SDR that's walking into the office every day and thinking, hmm, who should I go after? They've just lost an hour. Then they spend the next hour thinking, hmm, what kind of email should I write to this person? There's another hour and a half gone in their day. And when you've automated all these different things, and when you've written custom sequences for each one of these different lead types, or at a minimum, some of the highest converting ones, that is where you've just done in 20 minutes what takes someone their entire morning to do on a daily basis. Now that that foundation is in place, we obviously walk you in great detail on cold calling. There's videos on this channel. There's videos in our community. Whether or not you can join, not a problem either way. But when you're looking at writing emails, there's a million different ways you can do it. And I think some of that, again, we teach you how to track this over time, see which types of emails are performing better versus others. But one thing that we really sought out over the last six to eight months is also getting different email and verified top performing emails from different market leading companies as well. So we've worked with a lot of different reps that are actively SDRs or that were formerly SDRs, and we've aggregated some of the highest performing emails across different industries to give you an idea of some of the things that we see and the consistent patterns, regardless of what you're selling, that tend to do better than just the average email or the one from marketing that doesn't really convert or you don't even really believe in the copy itself. And again, just a quick step back, you've prioritized your territory, You've written out and really defined what types of leads do really well on the inbound side, on the outbound side. You've put some automation and reporting in place to capture those automatically. So at your disposal, you have all those different lead types available. Now you start writing customized emails, not just for any generic lead, but the person that downloaded the white paper on this specific feature of your platform versus the one who downloaded a white paper on a comparison of you and your top two competitors. You are writing custom sequences for the lead type specifically, not just the generic CTO who looked at something on your company's website. This is how you truly accomplish personalization at scale, and it takes some time up front, but when you have this system in place, now we can get into the effectiveness of cold calling. And again, what you'll notice is because again, that foundation is in place, the ability to have a custom opener on a cold call, the ability to talk about something hyper, hyper relevant to that CTO who downloaded a white paper or attended a webinar becomes that much easier because you've laid so much of the groundwork down first and now it's honestly on autopilot. And that is really the first half of what we go into an insane amount of depth on in our SDR Accelerator community. Obviously, it's very important to hit your quota if you have aspirations of promoting to an account executive, but hopefully that gives you a very good idea, again, regardless of if you can join our community or not, of how to plan your territory. It gives you some thoughts that, you know, hey, maybe I am doing this thing kind of half-ass and I'm only doing it about 60% as good as I could have. If you had the best leads available to you at all times, if you had the best custom written email sequences tailored to every type of lead. Imagine how much more effective you can be. And maybe even if I see your email now and it's highly targeted, it's highly effective, but I'm busy, when you call me, because your email was that much better, I'm willing to take a conversation with you, thus then being able to drive a cold call is great. But there's another portion, again, going back to some of the opportunities we saw in the tech sales education space. The second half of this framework and the second half of what we're teaching in our community is really around how to navigate the political situation of a company. And don't get me wrong, I am not here to teach people to do things deceitful or step on the toes of others, but there is a very real thing. If you're at a fast growing company, you need to be aware of your internal brand. If you're an SDR that's consistently hitting your number, but there's two peers around you that are more or less at the same quota attainment, and you're the one that's always complaining, you're being a pain in the ass, you're not thinking about how to position yourself long-term, that will really hinder you when you ultimately get to that time to promote. And again, conversely, I do think there's a lot of things you can do to build rapport with your direct managers, to build rapport with the broader organization. And I think the biggest mistake, if any, that I see many young SDRs make is they think that quantity of exposure and quantity, just more time in front of the VP of sales, more time in front of the CRO, 
more time in front of leadership is always a good thing versus focusing on the quality. Because again, if you just feel like obligated to talk all the time, I, for instance, as busy as I am now, if I get an email from someone or some of my biggest fans on the YouTube channel, and again, thank you for the support, but if you're commenting all the time and I see you haven't actually made any meaningful progress, that's less impactful to me than maybe an SDR. Again, I'm, I'm not a CRO right now, I'm still an individual contributor, but if I have an SDR that maybe doesn't talk to me every single day, but every time they promise me something, they get it done, or every time they promise me something, I can tell that they really, even if they didn't accomplish their goal, they went to extreme lengths to attempt to accomplish that, and I'm only speaking to them once or twice a month, maybe. I remember that person, and I'm honestly more impressed by that than someone who just wants to talk about the weather, or talk about the football game, or talk about some generic topic all the time. And this is something we really dive into a lot, not only getting perspective from myself, but also from Chris and many other people in the industry. And I also think another element that is really not thought about long-term is how to foster a relationship if you're an SDR with the team of account executives that you support. Because there's lots of opportunity there if you're working with an account executive who really values your work, who really trusts you to call important and influential contacts within a company, you're gonna have a lot more leeway and all of a sudden you're gonna find way more opportunities rather easily because I as an account executive, I'll be honest, anytime I have a very hot lead come in, anytime I have pricing or a demo request or anything of this nature, I'm inclined to take that myself because I know it's very serious. But if I have an SDR that's really working hard, that's really doing well, that has their messaging, they're consistent, they have all of these different things locked in and on point, I'm gonna be way more tempted to give it to them, let them drive it, and give them credit for their work versus feeling like I wanna do that myself. So hopefully the quality versus quantity analogy really helps crystallize in your mind, gives you the ability to reflect on your internal brand, how you're perceived by your account executives, et cetera, et cetera. The last two points that I really wanna bring up are obviously the interview process. That is something that we go into an insane amount of depth on because I made this mistake myself when I first tried to promote to a higher level account executive position. I was ready to come in and talk about how my emails on average converted 10% higher than the average department email. I was ready to talk about how I had created 14 you know, sales opportunities on a quota of seven. I doubled my quota, okay? What does that mean in terms of my ability to be an effective account executive? And it's not that that you know, past work experience and those things aren't relevant, but if that's your entire platform going into a promotion for an account executive, and you're not able to tell me how you strategically planned your territory, you're not able to tell me about a couple of different and unique opportunities that you really went out of your way to get and did different than any of your peers, if those stories aren't on lock, it's not like you're not going to get the account executive position, but you risk not being the clear number one candidate within that process. And that's what I'd say if there's any takeaway for you if you're an SDR looking to promote, Again, if you're hitting your quota and anyone else on your team is and you're up for promotion, that's table stakes. And that's a great thing to bring up. It's a great thing to talk about, but you also wanna be able to communicate about how effectively you are planning your territory. You wanna communicate via analogy and stories in terms of some of the biggest opportunities you created, some of the biggest accounts you were able to break into. And I see a lot of SDRs get tripped up in this because they think, hey, I hit 150% of my quota as an SDR. Why wouldn't you hire me as an account executive? And I think that's a fundamentally flawed narrative in your own mind when you're coming into those interviews. So we go into a lot of depth about not only how to handle the interview process, but how to package all of your SDR experience and really talk about it in a way that's meaningful to an account executive position. Lastly, a really, really big one, sales is a stressful career. Let's call it what it is. It is not all sunshines and rainbows. And I really think both the, uh, you know, having people in your corner, whether that's at your company, whether that's peers in your family or your network that work in the same industry, having someone in sales really help balance you out, make you remember that the ups and downs are a part of this is really crucial to staying sane. And not to mention a lot of other things when it comes to just keeping a decent health, keeping decent fitness. These are things that honestly, I think if you really wanna achieve high levels of success in sales, you borderline need to treat yourself like an athlete. And again, you don't have to have a six pack, you don't have to bench you know, 300 pounds or squat 500 pounds, but I do think if you're partying every night or you don't have the safeguards in place to really regulate your emotions, it's gonna be really difficult if you're swinging all over the place 
to find success long-term in a tech sales career. But nonetheless, recapping the framework that I really developed over time to make myself hyper, hyper effective prospecting as an SDR, not all leads are created equal. And if that's the one thing you remember from this video, I hope that that is that. You have inbound leads and outbound leads. Inbound are already interested in what you're doing, but it goes without saying, within that category of leads, the person who wants a pricing request or the person who you know, asked for a demo or all of these different things is obviously more interested than the person that took a webinar. But when you've exhausted those leads across the four different webinars that your company hosted this month, across the three different white papers that your company is advertising on LinkedIn, which ones equate to higher interest? And on top of that, how do you automatically create reporting such that you have those leads at your fingertips at all times? Then once that is in place, how do you create highly effective and highly customized emails to each of those different lead types that allow you to have very high quality conversations with very minimal effort? And this, again, if there's any analogy, if you've been in the seat for a while, this, these are the types of things that your fellow SDRs are spending four hours doing every single one of the mornings they start their job that you've got on autopilot and down in 20 minutes every single day. And when you hit 80 to 100% of your number, basically on autopilot, Imagine how much more you can get done now with an effective relationship with your account executive. With all of that extra free time, you can find the leads that people don't even think about or have the time to even get to because they're so busy trying to create a custom email every day. They're so busy trying to ask themselves, which lead should I go after? And they may get an answer, but they don't put the reporting in place to get that automatically. They're not doing the things that make them consistently get hyper, hyper efficient with their time over time. And I think if there's anything you take away from this, that is the most important thing when planning your territory as an SDR and really positioning yourself as an effective account executive when getting to that interview process. So again, thank you all for the support over the last two years. The last eight months have demanded a lot of Chris and I, both between our day jobs and doing this at night and on weekends. There's more information in the description about our SDR Accelerator. And again, if you're not in a position to join, not a problem at all. I hope you got a lot out of this video and feel free to comment below if you have questions about your own SDR career. Feel free to shoot me an email in my about section on this YouTube page. And again, check us out at higherlevels.com. Really appreciate the time. Really hope you got a lot out of it and we'll see you in our next video. Thanks.